first graders and first grade families. Um, my name is Mrs. Jenks and Miss Robbins and I would like to kind of go over some things uh, with families so that hopefully we can answer some of your questions. Uh, we have the student planner. I have one over there. Here's a student planner. And I mentioned this on opening days, but um, our student planner is one of the tools that we use a lot in first grade. And mostly what we'll do is check for teacher-parent communication every single day. Mm -hmm. And so this could be any special notes that you want to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, also in the planner, we are requiring nightly reading. And so you'll notice at the bottom of each day, there is a spot for um, your reading log. And usually a good rule of thumb is 10 to 20 minutes of reading every single night. And in the early months of first grade, it's totally fine if parents read to students, but we are going to start um, scaffolding and building stamina in students reading themselves as well. One of the things, um, one special note, and we'll keep kind of saying some of these things about reading, but when you're reading with your child, you do want to see if your child can problem solve the words themselves. So even though it's hard, try not to correct them as, as, soon, as, um, as soon as you can when they're reading to you. Um, also with the planner and logging reading, um, first grade has a book drawing every Friday. And so your student, if they read each night and record, and we like your signature, just like a little um, initial as well, but if they read each night, then they will be entered into our weekly book drawing for a chance to win a free book. So that's really, really exciting incentive for kids to be reading as well. Um, also in the student planner, you will be noticing these behavior sheets. So this is just um, a weekly behavior chart that kind of emphasizes our learner profile, which um, is which is what our entire school over elementary and the high school abide by as far as our, um, our school culture. And we'll be talking a lot more about the, the learner profile as well. And it's just a daily check-in to kind of inform families about student progress and behavior throughout the week. Students will have their own ticket at school. And this is actually attached to something we like to call Friday activity. And so every Friday, um, both Miss Robbins and I do a really fun activity with students that they work hard all week um, to earn. And so that's really exciting. So these don't, uh, don't worry if you see these come home because they will be coming home every week. Another piece your child is gonna bring home every day and bring back to school is their math binder. They're gonna need this for homework um, to do after their in-school days. They're also gonna need it for their virtual learning. Um, so this is one, um, a math binder from my class. Mrs. Jake's binders are green. Um, and I have some clear tabs on the side here. So first off, we have our problem sets. And after the problem set is the homework. So. Um, on their in-school day this week, they did pro um, lesson one problem set. So for homework, they had to do lesson one homework, which is right behind. They also completed an exit ticket, which they will have to do when they're at home doing the virtual learning. My exit tickets are after the third clear tab, and I'll color code these eventually. Um, after the third clear tab is the exit tickets, and they go right hand in hand with the lesson. So if we did lesson one problem set and homework, um, your student is then going to do lesson one exit ticket. And that's all going to be um, verbalized during our uh, meetings online. So your student will see all of that. But these come, it's very important that these come back and forth every day. Okay, another piece that your student is going to be bringing back and forth to school um, is their take home folder. So this is Mrs. Jenks, minor black and white. Um, there are two things that are going to be coming home with your child next week, um, along with some other pieces, which is their homework, but these two pieces are going to stay at home with you. So the first piece is this neat little key ring that has all your login information for your students. So this one says James class resources, codes, and logins. It's going to have your information on how to get onto a Google meet, which we're also going to send out another video explaining that. Um, it has your students login for Zern, which will be huge for at home learning with math. Um, it gives them direct pra practice and it um, is very good at helping reinforce best practice, uh, proper and best practice. Um, you're also going to have your students um, login information for Epic. 
This is just basic, um, a basic login with our class code, and then your student goes and finds their name in there. Um, the last two pieces are our Scholastic login and a picture of your student as well. We will eventually be adding Seesaw, or login for a class Seesaw account um, onto this key ring, but we just aren't ready to use that. The other piece we're gonna be adding eventually is our Seesaw login. I'm sure some of you are familiar with it from kindergarten last year, because I know they used it. It's just an online platform to communicate with parents and also share student work and um, kind of assignments that the class might have as well. So eventually we will be launching that and you'll have another login card that'll help you get on there. So Ms. Robbins just mentioned our class schedule that all families will get a copy of. We'll send out a digital copy as well. So even though um, both of our classes have exactly the same curriculum, exactly the same, we have similar schedules, but there's a few differences between the classes. So it's important that you do review out each class's schedule and um, and that will really help you on the virtual learning days because you'll get to see, oh, if there's core instruction in math or reading, those are the times that you must be logging on and tuning into the live feed instruction in the classroom. Um, virtual students will not tune in during specials classes such as our Spanish HE guidance, for example. And uh, Inquiry, the inquiry block is usually at the end of the day and that will be optional for students at this time only because some of the lessons are a little tricky to replicate remotely, but you're welcome to tune in and we will also be sending home, uh, home materials for inquiry. So remote students will still participate in that material. One other thing that we wanna make sure that you understand is that we're hoping and requiring rather all students to log in promptly at 8.30 in the morning so that we can take attendance. We'll be taking attendance for virtual students as well. And so, for example, even for me, um, on Monday, I have a special first thing in the morning. I would still like virtual students to log on so that I can take attendance, attendance and, excuse me, check in for the day. Um, if you have any questions with the schedule, just reach out to us. And as I said, we will be sending it out digitally. We'll give you this paper copy. This will really be your lifeline um, as far as following our schedule. Also, really quick, you'll notice that there are, um, there are little notes about the structure of each lesson. So while we won't be sending out specific lesson plans for each day, you'll notice that math has a very specific procedure and we will be doing it exactly that way every single day. Uh, language arts has a very specific procedure and we'll be talking about those procedures as well. So we're, our hope is that you won't be lost in the, in, um, in the instruction because it will be consistent and the procedure will always okay. be. Lots of information, I know. Um, we have one more big piece that's going to come home. This is called the Daily Five Folder. Now in the first grade and actually K through five at Ofer School, we utilize the structure um, Daily Five and cafe for literacy. And as I mentioned in your brochure that you'll find in here, Daily Five and cafe are not necessarily a curriculum, but rather a structure uh, for how we shape our literacy times. In this folder, you'll notice, we've got a lot of things in this folder. So this is gonna come home. Um, our goal really is to emulate the Daily Five experience at home as we would do it in the classroom. And so we have some word work activities in here. Um, you will find your student's trick word booklet. So the phonics program that we use um, refers to sight words as trick words. So that, there's the language we use there. And these are actually the trick words for the entire school year, list one through 10. And we'll be communicating with you um, about which list we are currently on as we move through um, the program. You'll notice that we will be putting in here a monthly epic calendar. This is just a fun calendar uh, that kind of dictates some epic goals for each day. Those will be really helpful, helpful for you on remote learning days if you're um, searching for more activities for your students. Lots of great listening to reading activities here. Um, we have some materials explaining Daily Five. And we actually even have a Daily Five rubric so this really spells out what your child should be doing during this structured Daily Five time. Um, as the name announces, Daily Five is five literacy activities. It is read to self, read to someone, listen to reading, word work, and work on writing. Because of the unique circumstances of this school year, um, we will not be reading to someone at school. Uh, however, that is a really great Daily Five activity for kids to be doing at home with families. 
And we will also not be listening to reading uh, virtual or with devices in the classroom because students will be on devices so much this year, we will not be using them in the classroom. Listen to reading in the classroom will really be teacher read alouds and modeled reading by the teacher. However, at home, if your student would like to listen to reading on Epic, for example, that is a great daily five activity and students really love that. You'll also notice there is a cafe menu. Cafe stands for comprehension, accuracy, fluency, and expanding vocabulary. This is a staple in first grade. And you'll notice there are a plethora of strategies that we teach to, um, to develop those literacy skills in first graders. And you'll be hearing a lot more information about the um, cafe menu from us. We will also be giving um, literacy reports. <clears throat> so we'll be updating you on which strategy your student is currently working on. So this would be a really great tool to review as you get this material. <clears throat> okay. Also in the Daily Five folder, we have a little brochure kind of going over Daily Five and kind of what I just told you. So in case you forget, this explains the structure. We put in wiki sticks for students. Um, students can use um, Play-Doh or any other creative ways to practice their words. We'll start practicing some of those, which is really fun for kids. And then also um, there's a whiteboard marker in here because Here's our accountability piece. So every day that your student comes back to campus, teachers will be checking this daily five check-in chart. So when I get students back um, on campus, I wanna see, oh, what did you do yesterday? It looks like you did read to self, read to someone, work on writing. And I, wanna, I want to talk to students about what they're uh, doing for daily five at home as well. It's really, really important to stick to these structures um, even though students aren't on campus every day because it's building stamina for these kids. Uh, so we're going to try to stick to those, um, those schedules as much as we can. Also, book bins. Book bins came home um, last week. And we, as we said, we're trying to replicate the Daily Five experience at home. And so your student will have good fit books inside their book bins. Um, we will be sending three books home in the Daily Five folder. And we obviously want to be very careful to make sure that those books come back to the classroom collection, but we will be sending home um, books for students to read at home during Read to Self as well. So you can be looking for those and we'll be swapping them out as needed. And if you have any questions regarding Daily Five, um, you're always welcome to ask us. You'll notice when you log on for the virtual instruction, you'll notice that we'll always do some literacy lessons in the beginning. And then there will be a time where we break off into daily five, and that is your student's cue to step away from the screen and go do daily five themselves um, at home. So again, we're trying to minimize the screen time only for core instruction, and then students will break off for individual activities at home. Okay, now because families were not able to come into the school building, I'm gonna give you a little tour of first grade. This is our classroom. These are some of the activities that we did this, this week. Here's our cubby area. Now in my classroom, I like to use buckets for seats and students are keeping their own personal materials inside the buckets um, to try and stay hygienic. Okay, we have some awesome, beautiful pictures of your first graders. And of course, we do have seating six feet apart. And so that is the tricky, tricky part that we learned this week, but we are doing our best and the kids did a great job staying six feet apart and sanitizing. And so, I just wanted to give you a quick tour. <laughs> Welcome to Miss Robin's first grade classroom. This is where your student comes in every day and comes and puts their stuff in the cubby area, which is looking pretty bare right now. Um, when you come in, this is where your student's clipboard and everything hangs up. And eventually there's gonna be student work and pictures up here. Over here we have our word wall, which is where we put all of our words of the day and trick words. So you will see that in, um, in our virtual learning and it'll be referenced throughout. 
Um, these are your student de students' desks. We did our best to try to space them out six feet from each other um, to keep our students safe as possible. Um, we do have a rug up here, which I have used a little bit um, to distance kids for um, carpet learning. So as you can see, there's different animals. So I can have one student sit on the kangaroo, for instance, and another over at the tiger. Um, we do foundations right up here. You will see that for our virtual learning as well. Um, over here is our cafe bulletin board, which our new cafe strategies go up on once they're taught. And by the end of the year, this will be so full. Um, and over here is our new math vocabulary. So as we've only had one lesson so far, there's nothing up there yet, but that also will be very full by the end of the year. Thank you for joining me for a little classroom tour today and look forward to seeing everyone next week.